So hello, my name is Daniel Vrátil. I work at, KD, uh, at Red Hat on KD desktop environment. And this is my colleague uh, Siddharth Sharma who works at the product security team. And today we want to uh, tell you something more about the future of KD. Most of you probably heard about KD5, which is the next generation of KD desktop. And uh, today we want to tell you uh, what are the three major changes that are waiting for users in KD5. Uh, before I start, please allow me to go briefly through the history of KDE. It's not working. It's not working anymore. Yeah, there's the history of KDE. Nothing works. Now it works. Okay, so this is KDE 1. KDE 1 was released in 1998. It was two years after it was uh, announced officially on mailing list. KDE 2 was released just two years later followed by KD3, which uh, was with us for long six years. And most people really liked it because it was stable and it had all the features they needed. And KD4 came. Uh, most people probably remember that the beginnings were not as good as we wanted to be. And now it's 2014 and we are waiting for KD5. The question is, will it be KD4 all over again? Hopefully not. Uh, Unlike KD4, KD5 will, is not revolution. It's just an evolution of KD4. So we will change things under the hood, but only a very little will change for users. Uh, in this talk, uh, we will mention three major changes that are going to happen in KD5. One of them is porting to Qt5. But this talk is not about Qt5, so I will just skip it. And I will skip to KD Frameworks 5. Uh, if you use KDE or if you ever heard about KDE, you probably heard about KDE Lips. That's a huge package with one huge library, well, it's a bunch of huge libraries that every KDE application depends on. So if you are using, say, GNOME or uh, XFCE and you, you want to install this single simple application from KDE like console, you need to drag in all the dependencies that, that this application has, which, is, which includes KDE Lips. And KD Libs itself have like tons of dependencies because they are really, they provide a variety of functions and they depend on many other different ri libraries. And KD Frameworks, one of their goals is to change this. Uh, so the community decided that it would be nice if we could just take all the functionality that KD Libs offers offer us as a wall and split it into smaller frameworks or modules that uh, would allow people to install like console and console would drag in only the real stuff that it requires for it functioning. And the second thing is that once you have this, you can actually have people or developers who, are, who want to develop uh, Qt applications and would, it would be so nice if they could use this one single part that KD Libs provide without depending on the entire KD Libs, right? So this is exactly what is possible with frameworks. You only can, you can, your application can depend only on this one small part of KD Libs, one, th this one framework. Uh, except for that, uh, we are uh, uh, upstreaming a lot of classes from KD Libs uh, to Qt, because over the years as KD Libs were being developed, we have collected a lot of classes that we thought are useful and they are not in Qt. And Qt5 was a great opportunity to take lots of these utility classes and improved classes and upstream them to Qt. So everyone can now use them uh, if they want, if they use Qt, uh, Qt 5. The latest uh, version that uh, has all the, all the improvements that will be upstream from KDE to Qt is Qt 5.2. And uh, yeah, let me pass the questions. So, uh, KD frameworks are split into something we call tiers and types. This is a long definition from the website. Uh, the picture is much better. Uh, on the picture, you can see uh, uh, in the rows, these are, these are called tiers and the columns are called types. And we, sp we split the, the frameworks into these tiers and types, uh, which define dependencies and their functionality. So in the bottom row, you can see this is a called tier one and Tier one are frameworks that only depend on Qt and system libraries. This is, for instance, Solid, uh, which is a framework that provides hardware abstraction information about network availability, 
information about uh, uh, and removable devices and this stuff. And this is useful to have, even in queued application, right? But you won't only have this single dependency. So this is uh, what you want to use from tier one. The tier two are more complicated frameworks, which depend on queued, on system libraries, and they can depend on other frameworks from tier one. Tier three is the most, uh, is the largest tier. It contains a lot of frameworks, which depend on Qt, tier one, tier two, and they can also depend on other frameworks from tier three, which makes packaging it quite a challenging task. Uh, the, the types in the, column the, the, the diff in the columns, they define whether the framework has uh, runtime dependencies. Um, there is some example of frameworks that we have created. Uh, uh, there are fr uh, frameworks like K-Archive, which is a very useful thing for uh, supporting arch archive formats that are not supported by Qt by default. Uh, we have Solid, as I already mentioned, for hardware abstraction. We have Sonnet, which is a great spell checking uh, framework. If you are writing the application in Qt and you want to use spell checking, that is not something you want to write on your own, right? Spell checking is pretty difficult. So why don't you use Sonnet? It's just a small library. It has a single dependency uh, on some uh, h unspell, unspell, a spell, or this kind of spell packages. And that's all, and you get spell checking for free. And this was not possible in KDE 4, right? Because it was all part of the huge KDE libs thing. Now you can just take the Sonnet library and depend on that. So it's not just uh, that, uh, so this really allows cute application developers to take a benefit, to benefit from the, work, the years of work of KDE developers. And most of these frameworks are really just separated from KDE libs and been only ported to Qt5, which means that the code is still verified, the code is still stable, and it's been proven for many, many years by so many KD users. Uh, so far, the, uh, the current state is that we have released a uh, technological preview in December, and uh, KD Frameworks 5 Alpha 1 is being released today. Uh, I could say that pretty much this is the stable version there are no more API changes in these alpha stages. Uh, there are just changes in the build system, independent uh, dependencies are being uh, resolved, and uh, something like some uh, things like include headers and this stuff is being changed. But pretty much, they are already ready for production use, right? So uh, if you are a cute application developer and you are looking into using or throwing away from your application a huge chunk of code that you have wrote, written yourself and can be replaced by frameworks, I think it, we are already at the stage where you can take it and use it uh, already now. Uh, the, the first stable release is scheduled, uh, I think, for June, beginning of June. So that will be a release of KD Frameworks 5.0.0, and this will be the final release. So until then, you can start porting your applications. Uh, that was the first, I guess, major change, or the second, actually, the second major change, except for porting to Qt5, that is coming to KDE5. The second part is Plasma Workspaces, which uh, Siddharth will talk about. So basically now, so basically now, Plasma workspace is built on Qt 5, Qt Quake 2, and with the OpenGL support. Uh, still in development phase, basic desktop layout having uh, currently like the notifier, calendar, applet, and taskbar clock, so which we will provide demo. So basically, uh, what we were doing, we were porting to Qt 5 and QML 2. There were, like in past few months, there were like Lit Plasma API reviews going on. So we were, uh, in the upstream, there was a lot of things happening so that we don't have to rewrite APIs every time, but it can be used with the other components or with the other applications uh, which want to use Plasma. And there has been some UI lift for the applets and the desktop 
itself. And yes, this is pretty important. Uh, there is going to be valence support for the KDE. So this this one is uh, the screenshot from Martin uh, Graslin, who is the KDE uh, Kazen developer. Uh, this screenshot was taken uh, yesterday, right? So in the QML porting, there is no more like Q graphic widgets. We are more into the OpenGL, so there is going to be the accelerated graphics. And it's now we are integrating with the frameworks as uh, Daniel started with those frameworks. So these are some of the screenshots. We created an ISO, and these are the screenshots from yesterday we were taking. So this is device notifier. We have done it quite better. And that's media player. Applet, this is new. So I think with the after MROC or something, we will have this. Yes, it should all control of any MPRIS2 uh, player, or player that have the MPRIS2 interface, so pretty much any open source player today. So this is the new calendar applet. Uh, so in KDE 4, you can see in the black that was there. And in KDE 5, this is going to be the new applet. And it would be integrated with the KDE PIM. So if you schedule any events, it will pop up here. It will be shown here. So it's still under development. That's the kickoff menu, pretty much same from KDE4. This is the wallpaper applet widget. And this one is like, you can change your colors in the background. So I think. It's important to mention that these uh, dialogues are written in QML. So it's not regular classical widget C++ application, but uh, it's all written in QML and Qt with controls, which makes it much easier to develop. Though at this point, it doesn't look really nice. Nice. I guess we need to switch to. Yeah, to I guess switch to clone only with that. We have to switch, we have to clone the desktop. Maybe we need yeah. to switch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can take a minute. Yeah, so this is this is the uh, pretty much plasma workspaces two running. Uh, this is a technological preview. This is a Git build from uh, like a few weeks ago. Uh, I was trying to compile the latest uh, Git snapshot from today, but didn't manage to do that. So uh, we have to start with this. Um, pretty much, it looks like uh, the old, the current Plasma in KDE 4, right? And that's the main idea of KDE 5. We don't really want to do massive UI changes like between KDE 3 and KDE 4 or GNOME 2 and GNOME Shell. We want to pretty much stick what, to what people are used, uh, used to now and just do minor improvements, like with the calendar applet, for instance, which now looks much better. But uh, generally, the UI concept is not changing. So uh, this looks really pretty much the same as uh, the, the current stable version. Yeah, so 
this is the calendar applet. We cannot feed it any events yet because uh, the KD pim part has not yet been ported to uh, Qt5 and split into the frameworks. We hope to start working on that in following month. And the plan is to finish it in next two, three years. <laughs> Stuff goes slowly in KD pim. This is the device notifier and what is uh, a new feature in another new feature or in design improvement in uh, Plasma Workspaces 2 is that the uh, additional applets are hidden in this uh, pretty much in single view. So uh, previously in KD4, when you uh, expanded the tray and you got the icons of the hidden icons, you clicked it and the tray uh, was closed again. And if you wanted to switch to another one, you have to open the tray again and switch it. So this offers a much better, uh, more services and it's easily accessible. So you can see there is a power management, there is a device management or device notifier if you plug in some device. Uh, there is a notification uh, area which is now empty. Yeah. And we don't have any batteries in virtual machines yet. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. So now this is the fun part. I have to actually crash first to make it work. early development. So yeah, this is the system settings dialog, or this is the desktop settings dialog that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's written completely in QML. So you can see it looks slightly differently than the, uh, than the other, other applications. Uh, if you switch to, if you can switch to another screen on the next tab. Yeah, you can see that uh, pretty much the only difference we get with cute, uh, cute quick controls is that we get this neat animations when switching between tabs. So it's really not that much better. Uh, currently the community is working on adding support for uh, theming because theming by itself is not that well done in cute quick 2. So we are working on pretty much being able to apply the styles that you have on your regular widget to this QML widgets. Then it will look much better. Yeah, this is uh, color, color changing, and this one is pretty cool. Yeah, this is all you wanted. Uh, this is all you ever wanted, right? Falling leaves, and there will be there will be winter team and summer team, and, and, <laughs> and yeah. No, this is impossible to backport to KDE four. That's why you need to use KDE five. <laughs> and the the. Uh, the real reason is that this is using uh, QML, right? So, and it is hardware accelerated. That's why it's so slow in virtual machine. Uh, can you add some plasma applets? Yeah. Right, the disadvantage of using QML2 is that we now require hardware acceleration, right? That was something that KD4 was kind of better at. Uh, so you, uh, using KD4 through VNC or Spice or something like that was easier, easy and it was kind of smooth because there were no animations and this stuff. With uh, uh, acceleration, it will be a bit more difficult. Uh, pretty much the, the, the requirements will be the same as with GNOME shell currently. Uh, luckily in KDE, you can just throw away the plasma shell and put it in a different shell while still using the KDE itself. So it should be pretty much possible to throw away this accelerated Plasma 2 and replace it with, for example, the desktop shell from uh, Alex Cute. Is it working? Yeah, it's yeah. working, but it's difficult to <laughs> I was concerned about the Plasma will crash when you add yeah. an applet. So we were doing all the day before the talk, we were just trying to add applets on the screen, nothing happened. I was saying, yeah, well, the f when you add the first applet on the screen, it will crash during the presentation. It is. Uh, currently, the available Plasma applets are pretty much those default Plasma applets that are shipped with KDE and that have been ported to QML and QML, and QML2 and uh, 
the community is working on porting the additional uh, plasma applets from plasma add-ons repository. Uh, last time I checked, there was only one applet ported. There are like 30 more to do. So there is a plenty of work to do. And uh, the another disadvantage of switching to QML2 is that all the applets that were written for KD4 will not work unless they are ported to, to Qt5. Why is it not working suddenly? Uh, it depends. Uh, I mean, if the applet is using uh, custom uh, widgets, like custom items, then it is difficult because in Qt4, you were just using, re-implementing a draw method where you were just saying draw a line, draw a line, draw a line, hey, you have a square. In uh, Qt5, you are using OpenGL, so it's much difficult to draw a square in OpengL. So, just the particle system. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a demo. on the other hand, we can make use of particle system, which is very useful on desktop. But the point of this applet is pretty much to showcase that we can now provide a really neat effects to users. Uh, obviously, not just in applets, but when it comes to Windows switching and uh, Windows uh, rendering. Currently, the Kvin, the window manager, uh, has been ported to Qt 5.2 and KD 5, and it's, it works. I'm actually using it from time to time on my KD 4 desktop, and it just works. One of the main advantages is that it can use QML for decorations and window themes, so you can then get some interesting uh, animations of your windows. So you have a question? Yeah. Can we continue? Yeah. Yes, yes. Let's put it all back. No. 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 Maybe we can switch off. Oh. Here. Yeah, that's it. Oh. Now it's now it's working again. Yes, uh, finally, this is the time schedule for when the, for the almighty KD5. Uh, currently, we have uh, KD4.11 released in October. There was KD4.12 released in the December. The important thing is that uh, because the, the, the people who are writing the desktop shell, they decided that they don't have enough people resources to actually work on both KD4 and KD5 at the same time. So they decided to make the four point, uh, oh sorry, uh, they decided to make the four point eleven release uh, LTS, so long term support, and pretty much this is the last release of the Plasma desktop. The applications and libraries and uh, development platform or whatever it is called now, ha uh, will continue with KD 4.12, which was in December, KD 4.13, which will be in May, I think, or something like that, and there might be even in KD 4.14. So uh, the applications like KDE PIM, uh, Dolphin, and all these applications will keep getting updates for many more for much longer, while the, the desktop itself is now frozen, and there will be very little development happening in there. Uh, for the frameworks, uh, you can see that the Alpha 2 is coming in March, Beta in April 1st, uh, and then the final release in June. Uh, the Plasma 2 release is supposed to be in the uh, in uh, Q2, but given the current state, I don't think they are going to make it. So I think that uh, we will have maybe first te real technological preview by the time, and then we might expect KD5 at the end of 2014, maybe be beginning 2015, if things go smoothly. The thing is, there is still a lot of porting, not just on it's because KD5, like that's not just a desktop. It's just, it's a lot of applications around that, and all this has to be ported. So that will be still a lot of work. Uh, so this is pretty much the end. We are pretty fast. Uh, if you are interested in trying KD framework, if you are a developer and want to try KD frameworks, uh, we have a 
uh, copper repository that you can uh, use. Uh, it installs the frameworks into slash opt slash kf5, so it doesn't clash with your uh, KD4 installation, and you can just try hacking on that. Uh, when, the, when we package the alpha one release, which, is go which was released today, we are going to move the frameworks to uh, regular prefix, so, so sl slash user slash something, because they finally made them co-installable with the rest of KDE, uh, with KDE4. The Plasma is, work, there is a Plasma workspaces too packaged in that repository, so you can even try that. It will add uh, Plasma workspaces to entry into your KDM or GDM or whatever display manager you use. And you can just log in into it, you can use it, you can try to crash it in all the many ways. Uh, but it's really not ready for uh, daily use. It's maybe just really if you want to see it, make a few screenshots. And uh, if, you are, if you are not that adventurous and you don't want to install this stuff into your computer, uh, we have prepared a live CD, uh, uh, a live CD ISO image that you can just install on a, on a USB disk and try it there. Uh, it, it has uh, the technological preview in a very package there which was released, uh, I think, a month ago, but we are going to update to the latest snapshot next week. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions. Yes? The question is whether there are any UI designers involved. So if there's any UI designer if, or if there are any plans to involve one. Uh, not really. Uh, in the Plasma community, I think everyone considers himself a designer, sort of. Uh, no, there is no, uh, we don't really have uh, what, as a single person who would really be a UI designer. We have a bunch of UI uh, experts, mm -hmm. like you, a user, how is it called, user experience yeah, or something like that. Rich who are working with the community pretty much, uh, pr uh, quite a lot. So it's, but for the, from the design perspective really, I don't think there's anyone. There was another question, yeah. So the question is whether there are plans to make it more touchscreen friendly. I, I think we are already, we had a Plasma active yeah. for that, so most probably when this will come into the fully stable, yeah. that uh, time there might be a I think the I, I Yeah, I think the plans are, the question is when it will come to re reality. I think the major, major effort is now really being put into the desktop part because that's still the major case. The mythical Aaron's tablet with KD5, of his KD is still not ready or done, so I think there's no hurry at this point. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you very much.